With the summer of 2018 quickly at an end, and the fall foliage just starting to peak and show its colors, I need to pick a new wood stove to heat my house. And as this is going to be my primary source of heat, I need to choose carefully. After looking at many stoves, I finally decided on the Yodel F500 Oslo CF. To me, the stove had the best design and the best aesthetics. But before bringing it home, I have to get my dusty basement fixed up. It needs to be made ready to accept such a stove and also become a place where I would like to spend a lot more time. The first thing I need to do is build myself a nice stone landing. I don't want this stove sitting right on the floor. A nice landing will bring it up high enough to be more at eye level and I want to bend over so far just to load it. The first thing I needed to do was gather some materials, so I headed to my brother's quarry and grabbed a nice load of some red colonial. After getting it back to the house and unloaded, I made a quick mock-up of the base of the landing, roughly laying out the size of it and the best rocks to use. And with the help of my good friend Brian, we mixed some mud and quickly got it together. With the base completed and left to dry, me and my brother went back to the quarry to find and cut the flag for the top. Two, four pieces like that, you need two foot, and two foot is 48, 24 and 24 is 48, and 33 and 33 is 66. So you need four pieces that are two by 33. That's a lot of cotton. And in case you're wondering if that's permanent stone dust in his hair, it isn't. It's just that gray. It is tough to tell with these old quarry rats because they spend so much time in the bluestone dust bath. After getting them all cut and back to the house, one stone needed to be cut again to make it around the chimney and a support beam. And with my oversized landing finally done, it's time to go get the stove and bring it home. It felt comfortable with four of us to safely get it out of the back of the truck and into my basement. But after the awkwardness of lifting it down so far was over, it only took me and my brother to get it up on the landing itself. A couple of lengths of six inch black stovepipe and a few screws, and we were ready to start burning. The first thing that needed to be taken care of is Yodel's very precise break-in process. The break-in process that Yodel recommends in its manual goes as follows. Light a small fire, newspaper and kindling only. Only allow the stove to reach a maximum surface temperature of 200 degrees and burn for approximately one hour. Allow the stove to cool to room temperature. Light a second fire, allowing the stove to reach a maximum surface temperature of 300 degrees for one hour. Cool to room temperature again. Light a third fire and gradually allow the stove to reach a surface temperature of 400 degrees and cool the stove again to room temperature. And this completes the break-in procedure. And with that process done and out of the way, I am now ready for the cold weather, which here in Pennsylvania didn't take very long. This is the wood I cut last year. It is now very well seasoned and very dry and that is exactly what this stove calls for and how it performs best. Although the wood is not cut to size, because at the time, I was not yet sure of which stove I would be bringing home. It still burns nicely, even if it doesn't fill the stove edge to edge. However, the one thing I do know for sure is that this wood will not be enough for the whole year. The burn temperatures this stove can achieve is very impressive, and the generously sized glass window just speaks for itself. Yodel has a single air control lever, and it gets very, very hot, but it does do a great job of drastically cutting the airflow, and even more drastically extending your burn time. The perforated metal tubing along the top of the firebox is Yodel's non-catalytic wood gas reburning system. The tubing pipes in fresh air from outside the stove, and the perforations in the tubing above the fire allow fresh air to mingle with the highly flammable wood gases and the heat already present inside the firebox causes the gases to ignite, creating what is called a secondary burn. 
It's this secondary burn that allows you to cut the airflow so drastically and yet maintain a very high burn temperature with no fuel simply wasted by going out the chimney. This system allows you to take advantage of both sources of fuel that comes from firewood, burning the wood fibers and also the wood gases. And best of all, all of this is done without any outside resources being needed, no electricity and no catalytic converter that needs replacing every year. In short, this simply just increases the lifespan of your wood pile without any sacrifice to performance and having a much cleaner burning stove. It was very important for me to be able to heat my house without the need of any electricity. This wood stove being in the basement allows me to heat my house with natural convection. The hot air simply rises off the stove through a grate in the floor above. circulates and warms the air upstairs and then the cold air simply pushes back down the door back into the basement this kept my small around a thousand square foot home very very comfortable no matter how cold it got outside and also if a big snowstorm ever comes around and knocks the power out for a good while it will not at all affect the temperature inside my home What you're looking at is the hot spot from the air inlet to the firebox. There are many times in the fall where sometimes you need a fire and sometimes you don't. So it was always good for me to keep a box of these babies laying around. It's all it took was one of them over the air inlet to get a fire going quickly and easily. After the stove has been burning correctly and the door is cooled, all I ever needed was a damp rag to wipe off a minor amount of ash to make that glass door crystal clear again. And just by opening the air lever all the way, in a matter of minutes I have a good fire going. Attached to my stove is a stainless steel double insulated chimney liner and without a doubt it's helping this stove draft as good as it does. If you're going to use the side load door, this stove easily accepts a 24 inch piece of wood. And anything under 19, you're risking the wood rolling forward as it burns and smashing your glass. And also the spring loaded latch on each firebox door keeps this air box sealed up tight and both work exceptionally well. While we had some warmer weather, I decided to make some burn time time lapse videos over the next 24 hours, each video consisting of 12 hours. In this first one, I figured I'd give it a try starting a fire without opening the air lever. And you can see the results for yourself, not too good. It smoldered for about an hour like that until I came and opened the air lever and got the fire going once again. And then I just left it alone until the morning. It was very important to make this test because Yodel sells you this stove on a 9 hour burn time. And from my use over the course of an entire winter, I can only say that depends on your definition of burn. If by burn time they mean holding a bed of coals, well they are drastically underselling themselves as I have had this stove hold a bed of hot coals for 24 hours. And if by burn time they mean holding a flickering flame, the best I was able to achieve was about 7, without creating any kind of special circumstance or changing up my wood. After each 12 hour test, the stove was at about 200 degrees. Another big selling point of the stove is its design, and it's very easy and convenient clean out. Starting the clean out each morning is best, and the first thing you do is rake the coals around to separate the ash from the coals and let it fall through the grate into the ash pan. I find a good ash vacuum was very helpful with this stove, but I'm going to do this clean out without it to show you some of the hassles if you don't have one. I also took the time each morning to just use a damp rag to wipe down the glass while it was cool. No matter what you do, opening this ash pan door will excite the coal bed, and it will excite it to the point where if you don't have the air vent open all the way, there will be some pressure buildup and some blowback. Before pulling the ash pan out, it's a good idea to give it a little shake so that the pile evens out. But in this case, I have two days of burning in that ash pan, maybe three, and no matter what I do, it's gonna make a mess at this point. 
Also, if you let it overfill like that, the pile tends to be skimmed off as you pull the ash pan out and all pushes towards the back of the chamber, resulting in a very difficult clean out without an ash vacuum. The ash pan chamber is very narrow and there's not many people that can get their arm all the way to the back for a proper clean out. And if you don't get all the excess ash out of the chamber, I would only describe the pan's fitment as only slightly forgiving. You also want to close that ash pan door as fast as possible and make sure it stays closed while you're gone. The ash pan door is also spring loaded and closes and seals quite nicely. And with the handle pointing straight down as you see here, that is how you keep the door sealed as tight as it can be. That is what makes the ash pan door handle a little bit different. There is not a set closed position and turning it a little bit either to the left or the right allows the door to creep open just a little bit which actually creates quite a drastic increase in airflow which is handy when trying to get a fire going in a hurry but since in Yodel's manual using the ash pan door as a way to start the fire with airflow is strictly forbidden I find the design of the ash pan door latch a little curious Another important note when starting a fire is that Yodel's wood gas reburning system requires a good deal of heat in the firebox to work. So when you first get a fire going like this, the stove will smoke like any other. So it was just a few weeks after the holidays, and the cold weather really started to set in. And of course, this is the time when my seasoned wood pile ran out. and I put myself in a position where I had to find some firewood in the middle of winter. It left me dealing with some people on Facebook, some of whom were very fraudulent or had absolutely no idea what seasoned firewood actually means. Of course, burning this garbage had some drastic effects on my heat output. This stove is simply not designed to burn wood like this. The Yodel stove burns the wood that is not well seasoned at a much higher rate. You have to keep the air vent all the way open all the time, which seriously depletes the wood pile at a much faster rate, while not producing much heat at all. Some of the wood I bought was actually pretty well seasoned, but it wasn't dry. But after it warmed up and dried out in my basement, I was able to use the heat from it to come up with some creative solutions for drying out the rest of the wood. Another downside to burning wood that was so drastically unseasoned was some permanent clouding to the glass on my door. I'm going to have to replace it as it won't scrape off with even a razor blade. But either way, I got through the winter. Most of it was spent in relative comfort, enjoying the fire. Going all in on the Yodel F500 Oslo leaves me with no regrets. It looks beautiful to sit in front of and watch your wood burn. It also produces a lot of heat and the clean out is easy thanks to the great design. This is the last fire I burnt for the year and I'm now out of wood. And with spring well on its way, I made sure I already had one cord plus of what I burned over the winter, ready to go and season for the summer. In the end, if you're trying to decide whether the stove is for you or not, I would say the only thing you need to ask yourself is are you the kind of person who is organized enough to keep your wood cut and split to season one year ahead consistently? And if you are the kind of person who goes and cuts firewood when they run out in the middle of winter, this stove is not going to be the best choice. If you were looking to learn something when you watch this video about the yodel, I hope you did. And as always, thanks for watching.